Hello, welcome Year 7 to Science at Harrow High School. We're going to be working with the Bunsen burner today, so I'm just going to be demonstrating a little bit about how this crucial piece of equipment works and also how to use it safely. So first of all, if we focus on this apparatus here, the Bunsen burner. Uh, the Bunsen burner is designed to give us heat in the lab so we can monitor chemical reactions, speed them up. And so it has certain structure to it that you need to be familiar with. This base is designed to be heat proof. So if you ever need to use the Bunsen burner or move it, you hold it from the base. You have the collar here where you can adjust the amount of oxygen that comes in. Your gas supply is obviously coming from this rubber tubing, which leads to our gas taps over here. This is the off position, and this position is on. As you can see, this Bunsen burner is lit. We'll be coming back to that one in just a second. But back to the one over here, this is our collar or our chimney, yep, sometimes referred to as the barrel. And uh, this is the mouth of the Bunsen burner just there. Let's have a look at the functionality of the Bunsen burner. So this is one that we've uh, lit earlier on. And as you can see, this time I'm using it with a heat proof mat because it's, uh, it's on and it's working. And so this Bunsen burner here, we focus in on the collar again. At the moment, you can see that the air hole is closed, which means that you've got limited amount of oxygen. And that's why this is considered to be the safety flame, the yellow flame. This is the flame that we leave it on when we're not using it. Uh, it's the safety flame because you can see it, it's not as hot, and so it lets other people in the lab know that this Bunsen burner is on. When it comes to actually using the Bunsen burner, we often don't want to use the safety flame because this is not efficient combustion, and we want to get more efficient or complete combustion. So we will open the collar to allow the oxygen in. As you can see now, the flame seems to have disappeared. I can assure you it's very much on. In fact, from the sound, you can probably hear the roaring. This is referred to as the blue flame. This is much more efficient combustion now. You have more oxygen coming in through the air hole from opening that collar. And this is how we would normally use the Bunsen burner. But of course, the minute we're not using it, it's very important to switch back to the safety flame. Okay, for this next experiment, I've got some magnesium ribbon fizzing away in there and some hydrochloric acid, and that's producing a gas. In fact, I can feel that's producing a gas because at the neck of the test tube here, I can feel the buildup of pressure and the rubber bung wants to escape. So without further ado, we're just gonna carry out a quick test to see which the gas is.
Okay, what I've got over here is a different chemical reaction now. So in this test tube, we have some manganese dioxide powder. You can see it fizzing away as it's reacting with hydrogen peroxide. The fizzing is usually an indication that a gas is being produced. So in here now, we have our, our gas produced. I can feel again the pressure building up on the rubber bung as the gas is trying to escape. So this test is slightly different to the last one that we did because, again, I'm lighting my splint. But this time, rather than using a lit splint, I'm going to put it out so now it's glowing, as you can see there. And just place it into the test tube. And as you can see there, it relights. It's glowing with quite a bright flame, just there. next experiment, we'll be demonstrating a more direct use of the Bunsen burner. And so what we'll be carrying out here is a practical called flame tests. What I've got over here is my pallet with my samples in there of different metal compounds. And if we return back to the Bunsen burner, as we described earlier, we will not be using the yellow flame. We'll be using the blue flame. So I'm going to open the collar of the Bunsen burner to get that complete combustion going. This is my nichrome wire. Usually we clean them. These are all been cleaned previously, but just to demonstrate how we clean them, we use a little bit of acid and place it in the flame just to make sure that there's no existing color. That's now clean. And I'm going to place it in my first compound. And just observe what color it gives me. As you can see, it's giving a turquoise color. We move on to the next sample using a new nichrome wire, which has already been cleaned. Let's dip it in a little bit of acid. And my next compound just there to make sure I've got some on the loop, as you can see. And if you observe the color, it gives you a very crimson-like color for the flame here. go now moving on to the next compound with my clean wire again just place a little bit of that metal compound onto the loop back into the Bunsen burner flame this is giving us a lilac color it's a bit harder to see this one but you can see faint lilac color especially here at the top of the flame okay. and as for the final one Give us an orange color. That brings to a close our virtual demonstration of some practical work. We look forward to welcoming you in September to the science department where hopefully you can carry out some of this practical work yourselves. Thank you.